What's happening everyone? Welcome back to another video. On this one we're going to be talking cylinder bores or the inspection and preparation of cylinder bores ready to accept new rings. Now it's a perfect opportunity to do it because I've got this E888 2 litre TSI engine rebuild on the go. That was a mouthful wasn't it? E888 2 litre TSI engine rebuild. <laughs> Now this video was asked for quite a few times off the back of the last engine build I did, which was the stroker motor, stroker motor, and uh, loads of people were asking because I, I, I used perfectly machined bores and I was able to, you know, set and check my piston and wall clearance perfectly. A lot of people don't, you know, use that because, you know, custom pistons like that, they're expensive. You're talking five, six, seven hundred quid. It's very, very expensive. So if you're going to do an engine rebuild and put the same pistons back in or even change the pistons, then straight away you need to be inspecting uh, and then preparing these cylinder bores ready to take them. So you've got the engine stripped down, you've cleaned out your bores with brake cleaner, carb cleaner, something like that, something that means that they really are clean. You need to break out the really, really expensive and sophisticated, calibrated measuring equipment that is your eyes and your fingers. So before we look at these cylinders on this engine, let's talk about what you should see on a on a perfectly good prepared engine. Now, the inside of the cylinder wall should obviously be nice and round. It should be quite dull. And the reason it's dull is because it's not contaminated with any lubricants or anything like that yet, because it hasn't seen use. And you should also see that lovely looking cross hatch design. <laughs> if we take, you know, like the cylinder wall into really simpleton terms, a lot of people think the cylinder wall will be completely flat. Well, it's not. If you look under a microscope, then you'll see a lot of peaks and troughs. The troughs, that's the bit that the lubrication stays in there, so they will be full of oil, providing you know lubrication and also cooling for that cylinder wall. The peaks, they start out as peaks, but then when the ring actually rubs up against them and beds in, then peaks go a little more like mountain-like. So then what you have then is a mixture of nice little troughs that hold the lubrication and then the nice rounded off peaks which have bedded in with the ring perfectly. Now that's the optimal look that your cylinder should have for your rings to bed into. Now if your cylinder bores don't look like that then straight away they are not in the optimal condition that is required for the rings to seat. So you're going to have to do some sort of preparation there. On top of that you need to get your fingers in there and you need to assess if there's any wear or damage. With your hand inside the bore you shouldn't be able to feel any irregularities at all. Now if you can see or if you can feel a scratch or a gouge, uh, uh, you know, a little patch of wear, sometimes the shop is like little shadows where the, the, the most amount of wear has occurred, uh, then straight away you need to consider measuring that bore to see just how bad it is. Now if it's really bad then it'll probably write the engine off. If it's not too bad then you can possibly uh, overbore the engine for a bigger size piston and then just carry on. Now even if there's no scratches or gouges then sometimes you get that lip along the top of the cylinder and that's just because the rings on the pistons don't come all the way to the top so the very very top of the cylinder is immaculate it's untouched whereas below that there's wear because that's where the rings have been forced against the side of the cylinder wall uh, now if you do have a lip it's not the absolute end of the world but it's not great to be honest because another thing to be aware of is that when they do wear down there's lots of wears kicking around in there wear the cylinder wear be aware for god's sake be aware <laughs> the only thing to be so another thing so to be aware be aware of the wear be aware aware of the be aware aware so be aware of the fact that the wear <laughs> is is never even it's not round so straight away, if you're feeling the lip there, then that cylinder is worn and that wore, that wear. So straight away, be aware of the fact that if you can feel the lip there, then there is wear and that wear will not be even. It'll not be round. That cylinder does not wear completely even. It, Because of the forces that are applied to the piston and the piston ring during the power stroke and also because of rod angle at the bottom, it means that the cylinders don't wear even, they wear more like an egg shape and that's a different part of the cylinder as well uh, and because of that the bore can actually end up with taper therefore it's worn at different rates at different parts of the cylinder so straight away you know you're looking at this and thinking even if it looks good and it feels good you're gonna have to measure it so let's go through the process of inspecting this and measuring it uh, and then we'll be able to determine exactly what condition these bores are and then what we need to do going forward. 
And straight away these balls don't have any scratches or dings, so they look good, there's no lip at the top, and you can actually see the cross hatch on each of the cylinders. The only thing to be aware of there is that this looks like it's previously been honed before, because you can see at the top where they brought the stone out and changed direction. Can you see that? But the cylinders do look quite good. And I was expecting that because this engine has been rebuilt before, so the cylinders have been prepared, uh, ready for new rings in the past. But it's not the end of the world that, as long as they measure out okay. But ideally these bores would be nice and dull. There is a glaze to the bores. And you get that glazed look from a situation where the troughs in the actual cylinder wall are filled up with lubricant and carbon deposits. Uh, and then the peaks are worn down. So what happens is to the human eye, it just looks like a shiny surface. It's not completely flat and shiny, but it is shiny. So what you need to do there is you need to break the glaze. Now you break the glaze with one of these. This is a honing tool. Uh, there's other types like, uh, you know, the flex horns that have got all the little balls on. But all that happens is you put this into your drill and you spin it whilst going up and down the cylinder wall, uh, lubricating these stones. And all they do is they just break the glaze I mean that's they just scratch the cylinder wall slightly and get you to that point where you don't have any contaminants lubrication but you've also got that nice sort of scratched cross hatch look to your cylinder walls and therefore they'll be prepared for this for the rings uh, so we're gonna do that but before we do that we'll measure these bores so we know exactly what size they are and in what condition with regards to taper now I measured the old Scirocco pistons and they were 82.44 millimeters in diameter and that's from 10mm up on the piston squirt, as you should do. Uh, these Mark 7 Golf R pistons are actually measuring out as 82.43mm. So they're 0.01mm smaller. So therefore, straight away, I'm going to have 0.01mm more piston wall clearance. Which doesn't really affect this, to be honest, because it should all be within spec. But we'll, you know, we'll make a decision on that later on. If... I get to the point where I think my piston and wall clearance is a little bit too slack, then I'll probably not use these Mark 7 Golf R pistons. I'll revert back to the Scirocco ones just to tighten it up a little bit. But we'll see how that goes. That's the whole point of measuring all this, isn't it? So first thing is I'll measure this uh, piston. I'll lock off my micrometer. I can then zero my ball gauge to that micrometer. So straight away it's zeroed to this piston. And then any measurement I take after that will be the actual measurement of the difference between the piston and the cylinder wall. It's not too uh, complicated, is it? So here we go then. Cylinder number one at the top. 0.045. Middle, 0 0.05. 0 0.05. 0 0.04. 0.05. Zero point zero four. Cylinder three, zero point zero four. Middle, zero point zero five. Bottom, zero point zero four. Number four, zero point zero four. Zero point zero five and a half. Zero point zero five and a half. So we've done front to back and now we need to check side to side uh, and now if the cylinders are completely round then them measurements will be exactly the same and if they're not exactly the same then the cylinder isn't round. Simple as that. Let's go. 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5. So what I've got now is a set of measurements north and south and east and west in each of the cylinders at the top, the middle and the bottom. And if we take the, the piston diameter, which is my zero, 82.43 millimeters. Now all the, the Golf R pistons are 82.43. They're really uniform. I add my ball gauge measurements that I've just taken, which were, you know, some are 0.04, some are 0.045. It was in and around 0 0.01 of a millimeter, around 0 0.05. So, just for the purpose of this, I'm just going to say the bores are pretty much 0 0.05 millimetres over the pistons, which straight away means that my bores are 82.43 plus 0 0.05. <laughs> are you keeping up? <laughs> uh, so straight away, 
um, my bores are therefore measured at 82.48 millimeters, something like that. And that's really cool. I'm happy with that. The nominal measurement for them is 82.51, and the maximum deviation from nominal is 0 0.08 millimeters. So straight away, these bores look really, really good. There's no signs of scratches, gouges. There's no lip. There's no signs of wear. There are little glaze that could do with a, a quick horn just to, to break that glaze down. And they're, they're pretty straight as well. So 0 0.04, 0 0.05, 0 0.045, that 0 0.01 or you know 0 0.005 of a millimetre is just so small it's, it's not worth worrying about at all. So these cylinders are really, really good and the next step will be to hone them. Right, so I've got the honing tool on my drill now. I've got it on uh, the slowest speed uh, and I've also got these stones at the slackest setting. Now you can tighten this thumb screw here and therefore it puts more pressure on and forces the stones out just that little bit more so you can give it more of a deep hone. I don't want to do that to be honest because the cylinders are in really good condition so I just want to give it a really light uh, I don't know why I'm holding that up there. <laughs> I want to give it a really light horn, to be honest. I don't want to really take too much meat off the cylinders. Um, another thing to note is that you need to lubricate these. Now, an old school machinist would tell you to use something like a really thin lubricant, like paraffin. I don't have paraffin, <laughs> but I've got WD, and uh, I've used WD before, so I'm going to use WD. Uh, plenty of WD in the cylinders and on the stones, uh, and then basically just nice and slow, go up and down the cylinders and the whole point is not to take loads of meat off it's just purely to break that glaze uh, ready for the rings so let's go so I've just taped the top of this engine up just to protect the oil galleries to be honest more than anything else now I will be scrubbing this engine with pipe cleaners and jet washes and all sorts just to make sure that it's immaculate and there's no metal swarf left over but I just I might as well you know what I mean Righty, let's go. Now that I'm really happy with. Now remember, at the start of the video, I'll give you an example of what they should look like. Your bores should have no glazing on it. They should have that nice crosshatch design. You're creating them peaks in the troughs, ready for the rings to bed in. If they don't look like that, then it's wrong. It's as, it's as simple as that. You'll probably find that your rings will not bed in as good as they should. You'll be down on compression, cylinder sealing, and therefore power, and you might burn some oil as well. And this is all on an engine that you've just rebuilt. So it takes it takes time and effort, but it's worth every single little bit of it. Uh, but now I've uh, honed them bores. Um, I'm actually gonna measure them yet again. So I'm gonna measure them just to make sure that I haven't took off too much, because you know if I did that and I took off too much, well then I've essentially put myself in a worse position. So I'll measure these again with the bore gauge. I'll just confirm them against the measurements before to see if I've took much material off and as long as they're good then this block's ready to build. Well, after a clean of course, but that's the easy bit, isn't it? Probably five and a half. Yeah. Party dog. And there you go, a little walkthrough, talk through on you know inspection and preparation of cylinder bores ready for rings. Standard bores, that is, with standard pistons. Uh, if your bores don't look like that, then they're wrong. If they've got a lip, then they're wrong. If there's signs of wear, gouges, scratches, well then they're wrong. But you also need to have a good idea as what is right as well, so that you know where you're going. You don't just do this blind, because then you could end up making it worse than, than what it is. But that's it. This block is now stripped. It's been honed. It's obviously getting new parts in the form of the the rods and the pistons, I'm going to have to gap the rings uh, and then it's full steam ahead, full assemble. Get this car 
back together and get it back to Chris because he's <laughs> probably wondering where it is. <laughs> he wants his car fixed and I'm making silly little videos with it, but <laughs> that's what it is. He give us he gave me the job to do, so it's his fault really, isn't it? Anyway, thanks very much for watching. That's my little walkthrough on cylinder wall prep. Um, if you've got any comments, any uh, you know, if you do it differently, anything like that, then let us know in the comments. I'd I'd really like to uh, hear from you. Um, as always, uh, you know, subscribe and give us a like. I really would appreciate it if you did like the video. If you didn't like it, give us a thumbs down. But if you do leave thumbs downs on videos, come on, what are you playing at? You know what I mean? Anyway, thanks very much for watching. See you on the next one.